Hey, Stampeder Nation. How are things going here? Hi there. It's Brad Harmby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here. As I've got some CFL and Calgary Stampeders off-season news here. As we're about, you know, 72 hours after the 2020 CFL Free Agent Frenzy opens here. And unlike previous years, when concerning the Calgary Stampeders here, they were actually a lot busier on the opening day of Free Frenzy, as usually with John Huffnagel's general manager, he usually gets a lot of internal business done in the off-season before Free Frenzy opens, and then he makes a few minor signings here and there, mostly after day one. However, what was unique about this season here is the fact that there was already some known holes that the Calgary Stampeders needed to fill here, as we had a couple guys retire, like Brandon Smith announced before the end of the season that he was going to retire after 12 seasons with the Calgary Stampeders, so that's going to be one hole we need to fill on the defensive back there. And then after the offseason just started, after the Grey Cup, I made that video where about the CFL coaching carousel that Rob Maver decided to retire. So we were looking for a punter there as a Rob Maber has played 10 seasons with the Calgary Stampeders there. However, we also got some other holes that we had to fill, as we have three big names who are trying their luck in the NFL here. Most notably, we had Reggie Bagleton, the wide receiver. He signed a futures contract with the Green Bay Packers, as well as Deshaun Amos on the defensive back there. And the last defensive back on the cornerbacks of our team, Trey Roberson had signed a futures contract with the Chicago Bears there. Yeah, that could be interesting to see Reggie Bagleton and uh, Trey Roberson going after each other potentially on a play. I mean, he definitely had a lot of practice right here in Calgary. So, uh, yeah, so the Stampeders definitely were forced to be a little more busier at Free Agent Frenzy here, and they were. And I also will go over other notable signings that happened around the CFL, and then we'll go over who's still available all on CFL.ca here, but I'm going to say this year's uh, for Agent Frenzy was more about teams reloading because last year, obviously, was there was a lot more intrigue and excitement here as there were three franchise quarterbacks that were all available at the same time, as you call Trevor Harris, Mike Rowley, and Bo Levi Mitchell. Two of those three quarterbacks did wind up changing teams, but thankfully one got to stay, and good old Bo decided to stay with us. So before I get into the video here, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey here, home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, or Stampeders, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along with that bell icon here. I also have my social media links below in the description if for any other ways you want to follow me. But I mostly do Calgary sports. Let's say, for example, talk about Free Agent Frenzy and the CFL. I also do some personal vlogs. I recently did my gaming memories and I talk about anything that's on my mind. I also do some attempt to comedy and share any other experience, I'd say, at a sport event. Let's say, you know, at the Great Cup, for example, halftime show or Jets flying over on Sale Labor Day. So uh, that sounds like anything you want to do. and or follow along and follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey here. Just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along here. So uh, before I go over all the changes here, I'm going to look at the free agents that the Calgary Stampeders signed before the free agent frenzy. As a lot of times, uh, we definitely sign our guys, get a lot of our business done, but it was just different this year. I mean, uh, before the free agent frenzy begin here, I mean, one player that we definitely kept was Nia Kiskadi from the uh, offensive line there. Definitely, you know, came one of our tackle pieces throughout the season there. And then we also made sure we re-signed Cordero Law. Definitely one of the big sack masters on the defensive line there. And then we also signed Justin Lawrence, you know, a national that uh, is on the offensive line there. It's always great to get Canadians on the, or Nationals, or Canadians as you know, on the offensive line because, you know, you have to have, have a certain number of ratio busters on your team. And it's 
Generally always great to get Canadians on your offensive line there so you can be able to pick up talent elsewhere there. We also made sure we resigned Ante Milolovic, leader, one of our running backs here. He's a power running back here, but it, uh, and also great on tackling on special teams here. Not too sure if we're going to be going with him as our starting running back here. We also signed forward an Omandi, who uh, he spent much of the season hurt last season, but it would definitely be nice to get him back fully healthy on the defensive line there. Same with Mike Rose. He was uh, you know, a nice piece that we've had all season, who uh, met half the season there. And then also the fact that we got Jamar Wall back. So one of our cornerbacks at least is back, as we definitely lost Trey Roberson to the Chicago Bears, and Brandon Smith decided to retire. And then we also signed Derek Wigan, who's a national on the defensive line there. So we definitely still got some uh, heat on the defensive line there for opposing quarterbacks. And the last guy, who's definitely been versatile on the offensive line that we resigned before the free agent frenzy, is a Cumbry Williams there. So he's definitely mostly been used as a center there. And then uh, another signing that we got, who actually was a huge bonus before the uh, free agent frenzy begun, was the Toronto Argonauts definitely has gone through a big change here and uh, definitely released a bunch of players here. And one guy definitely the Calgary Stampeders jumped on, and actually is from here, is Sean McEwen. So we definitely were able to get him before Free Agent Frenzy because he was released before the Free Agent Frenzy. So he was a, already a free agent here. So we definitely got another national player on our offensive line here, which may be a big signing because of who we could potentially lose here. So those are the guys that we were able to re-sign before Free Agent Frenzy here, which that's usually a lot of the business that John Huffnagel does. And not to be as busy on Free Agent Frenzy, but it was definitely an exception this year, this year because we have some holes to fill here. So uh, now let's look at uh, who, we got, who we got and who we lost because... Uh, there were definitely a few plays here that we've uh, got in and lost here for the Calgary Stampeders here. So first, the guys that we were able to bring in. Well, we got Sean McEwen, as I mentioned there, just before Free Agent Frenzy on the offensive line here. But one of the, big, I think the biggest signing that the Calgary Stampeders have made so far as this recording is bringing in Richard Leonard, who last season was in Hamilton, one of the defensive backs here. Definitely could fill a hole for... Uh, Brandon Smith and Trey Roberson here. He definitely can also do some special teams duty here. So I think that is the biggest signing for the Calgary Stampeders here. And we also signed Connor McGough from, he also played with the Hamilton Tiger Cats last year on the defensive line there. As there's still question marks, because you'll find out in the, who's still best available here is, uh, you know, is Corey Grinwick going to come back here? Because uh, he was pondering on the, as we knew coming into the, off season here that we didn't know if he wanted to actually come back and he had some injury problems throughout the season there but uh, there's still some indication that maybe he'll be back but uh, we got some you know reinforcements here either way and obviously bringing some competition here and then when I mentioned that Rob Mager retired from the uh, Calgary Stampeders we definitely need a, a punter here so we found the most experienced punter that was on the market here and Ronnie Pfeiffer, who was with the Toronto Argonauts there. So we got Ronnie Pfeiffer to be the punter here. And we still got Rene Paradise, as we know, for the kicking duties for the Calgary Stampeders here. And then, if you also go back to one of my videos I did in the offseason here, is we traded away the rights to Nick Arbuckle to the Ottawa Red Blacks here because there was speculation that he wasn't going to come back here because he wanted to get a starting job in the CFL here, and Ottawa appeared to be the best opportunity here. However, that's right now that trade is looking pretty good here, because actually Nick Arbuckle ultimately did sign with the Ottawa Red Blacks there, and at the time that worst, Calgary was going to get a third-round pick in the 2020 Canadian College draft here, but there was a conditional draft pick on conditions that he was actually signed, and since Nick Arbuckle actually signed with the uh, Ottawa Red Blacks here. Actually, the Calgary Stampeders, unless they do something else, actually own the first overall pick in the upcoming Canadian College Draft here. So, uh, I'm going to say not a bad swap for a quarterback that we were maximizing an asset on. And 
Best of luck to you, Nick, in Ottawa, and thanks for all you did for the Calgary Stampeders, especially last season, because when Bo was hurt, we definitely still kept going in the right direction, and because of his uh, contributions and the wins that we picked up, Calgary was at least able to host a playoff game, and then I'll just leave it there. So then there was question marks on who was going to be backing up Bo here for quarterbacks here, as the Calgary Stampeders were able to... Uh, they decided to keep Montel Cozart, who hit the market initially, but then we resigned him. That was actually a priority that uh, John Hopfnagel decided to do. I have no idea on uh, what Montel Cozart offers here. And definitely after uh, Bo, um, there's still some question marks here. But the third quarterback who will likely back up, who will be competing for the third stringer here, is Dakota Prukop who was with the Toronto Argonauts last season here. So uh, right now I'm going to say Bo is the starting quarterback. Then you got Montel Cozart will be the second guy. Then Dakota Prukup will be the third guy right now. But uh, I know we also signed a few other quarterbacks in the system here. But right now it looks like those are going to be the three guys that we're going to have on the depth chart coming in here. So these are the guys that we brought in or resigned here. I mean, the only guys that we resigned that... Uh, hit the market as of this recording was Montel Cozart here. The rest were all additions here. However, we definitely lost a couple guys here as uh, some of them were going to miss. Others were we pretty much knew they were going to be gone. Anyway, well, Courtney Steven actually was one of the defensive backs that the Calgary Stampeders signed in Freeze and Frenzy after we decided, Bo decided to stay here because he definitely had some distinct, you know, intriguing offers here. Or Courtney Steven actually is going back to the Hamilton Tiger Cats, so uh, he was definitely one of the defensive backs there. He wore number 11 for Calgary last season here. This is going to be a little bit of a loss here because uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Calgary Stampeders are going to go in wide receiver here. And actually, Calgary was trying to keep this guy. He was hurt for much of the season last season, but I think ultimately he couldn't pass up the opportunity to go play at home. It is Juwan Breskison. I know he's a 2016. Uh, draft pick and definitely made some high wheel catches here but uh, we're definitely going to miss Juwan Breskison plus he's a national as well so uh, but he's decided to go home to play for the Toronto Argonauts this season here and then we lost Chris Kasher the offensive lineman one of the front four there this could be a you know big loss here he decided to sign with the uh, BC Lions here and then we kind of knew coming in to the off season here that we were going to be going in a different direction. With running back here, and I know one of the guys that uh, we did decide to keep on, who we're still under contract, is Kadeem Carey, but uh, are we going to be going with Kadeem Carey as the starting running back here? I think that was definitely a sore spot for the Cowboys Stampeders, but Don Jackson has decided to sign with the Hamilton Tiger Cats here. So we definitely... Replaced a few guys on defensive backs and brought in a couple guys on defensive line. And then we found, you know, a punter that was available. And then we decided to uh, keep Montel Cozart and uh, pick up Ronnie, or Dakota Pruck here, so uh, Brook up here. So those are the guys that we added and lost in free agent frenzy here. I think the biggest loss so far, other than the guys that are trying your luck in the NFL, is Juan Breskison here. But the other, you know, big names that uh, you could say are going elsewhere here. I mean, know oh, that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, they uh, they had some decisions to make a quarterback here. As they actually ultimately decided to uh, stay with Zach Caleros. But then they released, uh, they re they released Matt Nichols, who actually he did sign with the Toronto Argonauts here. And they also signed McLeod Bethel Thompson, so it'll be interesting to see who's going to battle out there. Likely you're going to see Matt Nichols is going to now be the number one quarterback here, but they got competition there. And also the fact that, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Nick Arbuckle is going to Ottawa here. But Chris Strebler, he is going, he signed a futures contract with the uh, Arizona Cardinals in the NFL there. So it'll be interesting to see how the Saskatchewan or the Winnipeg Boo Bombers are going to do there. Zach Claros did start with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders here, but, uh, I mean, other big signings here that, uh, that the uh, that the other teams in the league signed, well, uh, Chris Rainey, 
the uh, returner who actually did start his career with the BC Lions signing with the Toronto Argonauts. Actually, he's going back to BC there. That's another big uh, signing there. And then Micah Johnson, who actually did play with the Calgary Stampeders, signed with the Saskatchewan Roughriders this past season. Actually, he's now going to the BC Lions right now. So I think those are the two biggest signings for the BC Lions is getting Chris Rainey back and also the fact that uh, Micah Johnson is added on their defense there. However, there's some question marks with the BC Lions on the direction they're going here because apparently there's some rumors out there that quarterback Mike Roddy might want out of BC because he's not happy how the team is going. But they definitely let Devon Claybricks go after season as head coach there and they brought in Rick Campbell here. But uh, the BC Lions definitely were busy on free agent frenzy there. And then when it comes to the Edmonton Eskimos here, well, they definitely beefed up on their defense there as they got Jonathan Mincy from Toronto and uh, Justin Tuggle from Hamilton here. Another, you know, solid signs that I think the Edmonton Eskimos have made is they signed Brandon, Brandon Burks, who was with the Toronto Argonauts, and they also got Shakir Ryan from the Montreal Alouettes here. But they also... Uh, Got in Antonio Pipkin for their quarterback here. Keep in mind, they still have Trevor Harris, and they did resign Logan Kilgore here. But they also got Antonio Pipkin. So uh, I think the Edmonton Eskimos have done pretty well in picking up some. And oh, yeah, they also signed former Stan Peter. No, not, I was thinking Tommy Campbell, but I, that's not the Tommy Campbell. It was Tommy Dream on the offensive line there. So uh, there was definitely some solid signs for the Edmonton Eskimos here up the road here. And then, I already mentioned Calgary here, Saskatchewan here. Well, one of the big signings that they were able to get, if you can call it a big sign, is that James Franklin, who was with the Toronto Argonauts last season, is going to Saskatchewan there to back up Cody Fajardo. It's going to be interesting to see how the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are going to do under Cody Fajardo after his breakout season last season, and then the fact that he was hurt and played through injuries in the Western Final there. But, uh... And then they also decide to uh, keep Solomon Elminian on their defensive linebacker there. And then they brought back the former guy, first overall pick, Josiah St. John, on the offensive line there. So uh, he's definitely been a journeyman there. So that's all the big signings for the uh, sketch and rough as I can highlight here. When I say the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, well, they, they got uh, better on defense here as they actually were able to keep Willie Jefferson because there was speculation that Maybe he was going to try his luck in the uh, NFL there, and you're an idiot if you're, everyone was after him as well. Because there was also a courting period, too, that opened up. I think it started on February 2nd, and it led it up till February 10th or something. And then the team had 24 hours to uh, negotiate that to get him staying here. But uh, apparently, uh, Willie Jefferson, everyone was after him, but he decided to stay at Winnipeg here. I'm going to say the big signings for Winnipeg is they got Josh Johnson, defensive back from Edmonton there, and they got Toby Antigua from Toronto there, as there were 12 guys that Toronto Argonauts definitely released here. Toronto Argonauts is definitely the team that was the busiest in free agent frenzy because they released a quarter of their team there just before free agent frenzy. And thank you very much for Sean McEwen, former Dino, that was us here. Hamilton Tiger Cats, well, I'm going to say they, uh, they decided to... Uh, Still have Dane Evans, and they still have Jeremiah Mazzoli here. But they were also very busy here. As, I mean, they, they took Don Jackson and Courtney Steven away from Calgary here. I'm going to also say they got Larry Dean. I think that's the biggest signing that they made on the linebackers here. He was from Edmonton there. They also got Justin Herman Reed, a linebacker from the Toronto Argonauts, who also, I believe he was a BC Lion as well there. And actually they signed former Stampede, and he was with the Montreal Alouettes last season. And Patrick Levels, the defensive back there. He was in Montreal, now going to Hamilton. And Hamilton also signed Devere Posey as a wide receiver here, who was also with Montreal here. So uh, definitely they needed to replace, you know, as we signed Richard Leonard and Conor McGo here. So uh, Toronto Argos, I mean, they were definitely weren't the busiest here. I mean, they signed Juwan Breskison away from the Calgary Stampeders. They also signed former Stampeder, and actually last season he played up in Edmonton. For wide receiver and Tavares Daniels here. Well, they also got Craig Rowe, the defensive line from the uh, Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. And they also got
got uh, Alex Bazzi, defensive line, who was up in Edmonton last season here. And then they also got Drake Nevis, the defensive line from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers here. And then they uh, made a trade with the Montreal Alouettes as Tyre Ty Kapinga and Boris Beatty were traded for each other. So kickers got traded here too. So uh, you're definitely going to see an overhaul in Toronto here as they got Ryan Dinwiddie, the former quarterback coach who was here. Now as the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts here. And they got Mike Clements in as general manager here. And he's definitely an icon, a CFL legend there. I think that's definitely a smart move just to have, you know, a face to the team from the past. That hopefully this will build up the uh, the CFL interest in Toronto. I'm thinking you got a market of over five plus million people here. You'd think there'd be, you know, 20, 30,000 in that five million that would like the CFL enough there, but uh, I'm going to say, yeah, the Toronto Argonauts definitely were the busiest here. When it comes to the Ottawa Red Blacks here, well, they think the couple big signings that they got here is they got Clinton Liang from the Toronto Argonauts here with a defensive line back there, and then they got wide receiver Anthony Coombs from the Hamilton Tiger Cats there, and then they got Don Yamba, the linebacker from the Edmonton Eskimos there, and then they also got Abdul Kane, the defensive back, who's known for his very long hair. He was a Toronto, now he's going back to Ottawa here. So Ottawa definitely did all right in creates a frenzy. Plus, they gave us a couple draft picks so they can get the rights to Nick Arbuckle. And uh, we'll see how things go in Ottawa this year with Paul Police as head coach and Nick Arbuckle being the starting quarterback here. And then when it comes to the Montreal Alouettes here, they definitely were able to keep Siante Evans. Uh, there was hope maybe he could come back, but he's staying in Montreal here. They got Dicon Glass from the Hamilton Eskimos, the defensive back here. I'm going to say the other big names that they got. Well, I mean, they got Tyler Kirpinga, the kicker. Actually, the Calgary Stampeders originally drafted him and was in the Stampeder system here, but uh, then we made him trade him when we got that Jerome Messam trade there. But uh, there were definitely a lot of few signings that the Montreal Alouettes made. So that's all the, I'm going to say, the more notable signings here all around the league here. So the last part of this video here, before I give my final thoughts on where the characters had years ago, now the fact that we have the first overall pick and an extra third round pick from the Ottawa Red Blacks in the Nick Arbuckle trade here. So according to CFL.ca here, here are the top 20 free agents that are still available here. The first one is Darrell Walker, the wide receiver who uh, played with the Edmonton Eskimos in last season. With the Toronto Argonauts here, someone definitely could still use him as a big-time receiver here, but he got salary cap considerations here. and uh, I mean, it's harder to uh, follow the salary cap because you don't see as many information in the CFL here, but I know the minimum salary has gone up 10 to fifteen thousand dollars here and each team has like I think five point four million dollars to spend here. So basically you're gonna get the mill guys just like it happens in all the major sports that have a salary cap here that basically you got your top tier established players and then you're trying to fill out the rest of your roster with you know cheaper players and so the guys in the middle could get squeezed out here. Definitely also can show that you know, hopefully Halifax can get things going, get the Alliance Schooners here. That I think there's enough talent here that you can field another competitive CFL team here. So Darrell Walker. And then number two, actually one uh, guy that I still wouldn't mind if he came back to Calgary is offensive lineman Derek Dennis here. He's, he's definitely been an all-star in the CFL here, and he's definitely been great for the Calgary Stampeders here. I think that's one of the reasons why Calgary definitely jumped on uh getting Sean McEwen when he was available before free agency because A, well Sean McEwen actually is a national, Derek Dennis is a, as an import, but B, there was speculation that uh, he might be asking for too much and the Calgary Stampeders can't get him under the cap here, so he's definitely available here and uh, you know we definitely spent, and we needed to keep Bo, and so we definitely, as long as we have Bo, I think we have a chance here, so we Got him. Well, it's going to take up a lot of the cap here, but uh, there's a couple other guys you have to sacrifice here. But Derek Dennis is available here. He worked out fine in Calgary. One year he went to Saskatchewan there. He definitely 
he struggled in Saskatchewan, and then they released him, and then we got him back for the 2018 season, and he fit right back in and found his all-star form here. So, uh, it'll really be interesting to see where Derek Dennett goes. And then number three is C.J. Gable, the running back for the Edmonton Eskimos here, and he's definitely been one of the top running backs in the league, and I feel that the Calgary Stampeders should uh, look at improving their running game here, as Calgary actually was the worst team in the league last season in running, but we also had a carousel with injuries here, but uh, C.J. Gable will definitely be too expensive to uh, get him here, but uh, I mean, is, that's the question I'll ask. Is Kadeem Carey going to be the number one running back for the Calgary Stampeders, or uh, maybe we'll find someone in draft here, but uh, that's number three. Number four is Jonathan Rose here, who was with the uh, he spent much of the season hurt here, but he was with the Ottawa Red Blacks here. Definitely uh, could be a shutdown corner, but uh, I think Calgary found that cheaper option in Richard Leonard there. Number five here is Micah Ali, who was with the uh, BC Lions and the Toronto Argonauts there. He spends down Toronto as well here. He's definitely, he definitely pushes the envelope. He's definitely one of the hardest hitting linebackers in the league here, but uh, he definitely, uh, sometimes he might teeter over the line for being, for, should this be a suspendable hit here, but if you're looking for a hard hitting you know, middle linebacker, Mike Ali, he's definitely available. I know he played for BC, and I think he actually did spend some time in Toronto as well. Number six, well, one of the top receivers that, uh, you know, we got to wonder is could Calgary could be looking for a big-name receiver is Naaman Roosevelt, who definitely, you know, was one of the top receivers for the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders here the last few years here. But uh, he might not be the top Receiver for our team right now as age is catching up with him, but uh, he's still available. Another uh, you know receiver that could be available that's available is Monte Edwards, his number seven here. I mean he was with the Toronto Argonauts here, but uh, he's still uh, available if anyone needs a wide receiver here. Number eight is Sean Lemon here. He's definitely been all over the place here. I know he was with Edmonton. He actually spent some time in Calgary. He did spend some time with Toronto, and he spent some time in BC here. He's been all over the place as one of the, uh, you know, pass rushers here. Does he still have some thing left in the tank here? So that's number eight. Number nine is Dominic Grimes here, who was also with the uh, Ottawa Red Blacks here, and he's one of the, you know, wide receivers that uh, definitely uh, kind of has gotten forgotten here after the big names that they had before last season here, but here's another receiver that could be added to, uh, you know, a team here. And number 10, well, here's another uh, offensive player here, wide receiver who struggled last season, is Luke Tasker here. Surprisingly, he's still available. You know, this is all salary cap reasons, too, why some of these guys are available. We're only, you know, 72 hours removed from the uh, start of free agent frenzy here, but that's the first half of the list here, according to CFL.ca. But uh, some of these guys could be squeezed out or might have to wait till close to training camp for injuries or maybe the season started. Number 11 here is uh, Devon Coleman, who was one of the, you know, another defensive lineman here who uh, spent some time with Toronto here after he got tr traded to, from BC to Toronto in the Sean Lemon trade there. Definitely another pass rusher here. So uh, if you're looking to beast up on the defensive line there. Number 12 is one guy that, uh, you know, are we going to still sign here is uh, Corey Greenwood here. I mean, he definitely was a tackling machine here until he got hurt last season here. And I think either he's going to retire or hopefully maybe still stay with the Calgary Stampeders here. And the Calgary Stampeders are still actively trying to keep him here. But because uh, was, he was pondering at the end of last season if he was actually going to retire or not. But... Uh, It'd be nice if we can get Corey Rick Greenwood back from the defensive line line there. Number 13, well, this guy's getting up there in age, but he could potentially still do the job, especially if he's willing to take a little less here, is Odell Willis here, who definitely spent some time. He actually started his career with the Calgary Stampeders back in 09, which is quite a long career for the uh, for football here. And then he was traded in that Romney Bryan trade, then he went to Winnipeg, and then he was the mayor of Swaggerville here. And then he spent a lot of time 
with the Edmonton Eskimos there. But uh, could Odell Willis still be uh, someone to bring in as a veteran presence for the uh, any team here? Number 14 here, which I think uh, why Calgary didn't sign him for kicking, but I think he's still a great punter and kicker here, is Josh Bartell, who uh, he spent a lot of his time with the Saskatchewan Roughriders and the BC Lions here. And he's actually Australian here, but uh, Calgary decided to go with Ronnie Pfeiffer, who is the more experienced and uh, cheaper, younger option there. But if you're a team looking for a kicker here, in the pinch, you got Bar Josh Bartell still available, or could the BC Lions still keep him? Number 15, well, uh, here's another, uh, you know, re receiver that broke out for the Toronto Argonauts here is Rodney Smith. Could he still be? And he's a taller, six foot five guy here. And he's only 29 years old, but uh, he, but he's a, he's a an American player, which you have to factor in the ratio in the CFL here, but. Uh, could Rodney Smith, you know, find a, a home here? Number 16, there's another guy that's still a free agent for the Calgary Stampeders, is Terry Williams here. Is there any desire to bring him back here, as he was primarily used as a returner here? And definitely, uh, he's used as a running back here, but uh, definitely if a team is looking for a boost in their return game here, Terry Williams definitely is the guy here, but, uh, you know, we definitely miss him if we... Uh, so to move on from him. Number 17 is Atori Latin, Latinzo, who spent some time last season with the Ottawa Red Blacks here. You know, just another depth defensive player. And then number 18, the Manny Show, Emmanuel Arsenal, was definitely a wide receiver here. Well, spent most of his time with the uh, BC Lions here, but the last couple seasons he was with the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders here, but he's had some injury issues and not as big as the Manny show that he showed in BC there, but he could be a uh, you know a depth receiver for anyone. Number nineteen is uh, Tyrell Sutton here, who was uh, with the uh, you know the uh, Hamilton Tiger Cats here. Definitely you know another option for a running back here was on the uh, Grey Cup. He played actually one, one had a good game at the Grey Cup there, but Dams and. Taggarts did not, but he just could be an option for someone who could add a running back. And I feel like that's definitely someone that the Calgary Stampeders consider here. And then the last one, number 20 here, he was with the Winnipeg Boo Bombers. He actually did play with the Calgary Stampeders early in his career here. His safety, Jeff Hecht here, who definitely was part of the uh, the Winnipeg Boo Bombers Grey Cup season last season. Win last season here, but uh, he could provide a veteran leadership as well. So uh, that's the top 20... Uh, who's still available in CFL free agent frenzy here. So uh, now to look at uh, who the Calgary Stampeders still have free agents here and my final thoughts on who I think uh, could still come back or might move on here. Well, Marcus Ball, linebacker, we picked him up late in the season here for a veteran president down stretch here and then he played one game and got hurt. He has been on a couple great cup winners here, but not too sure if he's going to, Continue playing in the CFL here. And then we got defensive back Adam Berger. He's still available from as a free agent for the Calgary Stampeders. I mean, he could probably probably surface somewhere. And then Derek Dennis, which uh, could be a big loss if we don't uh, sign him. But uh, I think that Sean McEwen signing definitely is preparing for that. And then Corey Greenwood here. It sounds like, you know, they're still talking to him. But uh, no decision yet on Corey Greenwood. The linebacker. Then we have a wide receiver at Austin Hartley, who's a you know depth uh, depth receiver here. Spent a lot of time on the practice roster here. I think he played a couple of games. He actually did play his college university ball with the Dinos here, so he's a free agent. And then you got Ivan McClennan here, the defensive lineman here. He actually has played a couple seasons, most notably with the BC Lions here. He actually got hurt early in the season here, so it's hard to say if we're gonna bring him back or sort of if anyone picks him back. And one running back that's still available is Romar Morris. But he definitely has some question marks with health here. But definitely another guy that I wouldn't mind bringing back if, it, if there's a fit there. And then the defensive lineman who also spent some time with injuries last season is Eze Marabe, who's also a national. He definitely spent more time hurt last season than uh, he actually played. 
And then another guy that might be almost time to hang it up here. He's also had a fairly long career, but he's had some injury problems. And definitely like him as uh, one of our defensive middle linebackers here is Junior Turner here. As Calgary released him just before our free agent frenzy began, no one has picked him up, but, uh, you know, he might be going to the end of the road here. Because he ultimately was the guy that uh, replaced Mike Labinjo, and I think we drafted him back in uh, 2010, I believe. So it's definitely, he's had a long career, and he's all played with Calgary here, but uh, he might retire. And another veteran that we picked up during the, during the season last season because we had injuries is uh, Jabbar Westerman. He's a national as well, defensive linebacker. And then Terry Williams, which, uh, you know, do we decide to keep him back here? So uh, that's definitely my rundown of free agent frenzy here. You know, but concerning the Kyra Stampeders and other big names that have moved around to other teams in the CFL here. I mean, there was definitely a lot of activity here, and the Calgary Stampeders were definitely a lot busier during Free Age of Frenzy because a lot of time we'd get our business done beforehand, but we definitely had some holes to fill, and, you know, I'm still wondering what could we be doing for wide receiver and running back here because, I mean, Kadeem Carey right now looks like to be the starting running back here, and he did show some promise here, but... Uh, the running game was definitely a sore spot for Calgary, and, you know, then Mante Milanovic's leader is more of a power guy. He's not a guy that you're going to use for speed. I mean, we have them in the system. You know, we still have Charlie Power. And then for wide receiver there, I mean, we're definitely going to miss Reggie Bagleton if he does stick with the Green Bay Packers in the NFL here. And then it sucks that we lost Juwan Breskison, but, he'd, you know, I guess you can't pass up a chance to play at home here. However, we still think we have a good committee of receivers. As, you know, Herjie Mayala, I mean, he definitely had a great rookie season here. Could he uh, break out? Kamar Jordan, I mean, he was hurt all last season, and he did play in that Western semifinal game. Could we still uh, get him? You know, could he still uh, produce with a full season training in that? And then also with the fact that uh, we got... Uh, you know, Michael Kuklas, and then we also still have uh, Eric Rogers. So, I mean, we're still pretty deep in, uh, and then Colton Hunchuk, another, you know, draft, late draft pick that last season, the National. So, who knows? I mean, obviously, we still got the, uh, you know, Canadian College draft to come in May there, and then, you know, the next thing you know, I'll be doing my Calgary Stampeders this month, and it's going to be the 75th anniversary season to celebrate 75 years of Calgary Stampeders football there. So yeah, that's definitely my whole recap so far on 2020 CFL Free Age of Frenzy here, as I feel like the Calgary Stampeders are reloading here, and we should still be a fairly competitive team here. I'll say as long as we got Bo, I think we have a chance here, but we definitely had some coaching changes as I made some videos on that, and I'm not too sure if I mentioned this in the video there, but the uh, of the three coaches that have moved on from the Calgary Stampeders last season have all got jobs. I mean, uh, Ryan Dinway is the head coach of the Toronto Argonauts, and then J.C. Sherrod decided to move down to Poly, you know, University there, Cal Poly University there, to be the special special assistant, special teams coordinator. I think that's how that position goes. And then Pete Costanza, who was coaching our receivers here, he's actually joined the Winnipeg Blue Bombers uh Coaching staff, I believe, as the running backs coach. So the three coaches, at least, are employed in football in some capacity next season. There, and you know, we definitely got some intriguing names added to the coaching staff in Calgary. If you see that video, where we brought back former receiver Marco McDaniel and George Cortez. I mean, another sit with Calgary to work with our offense there. So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey here. Home of the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, Stampeders. I just make sure you hit like, subscribe, and follow along with that bell icon. As I mostly do Calgary Sports, like videos like this. But I also do some personal blogs and attempt economy and share anything else on the road. Or at sporting events, for example. Let's say on Labor Day, when the Jets fly over McMahon Stadium there. So if that sounds like anything you'd be interested to watch. And I also have my social media links in the description below there. To follow along with this Calgary Sports Fence journey here. 
Just make sure you hit like, subscribe. I want to continue to keep growing on this platform here. I mean, a couple months ago, fittingly on Grey Cup Sunday, I did pass 100 subscribers here, but I want to continue to keep growing here. And I would like to set an ambitious goal then. I would like to hit 1,000 subscribers in 2020 here. Hopefully that can get done here. But, you know, one video at a time here and uh, trying to give, you know, best content as I can in this format here. So as I always say, go Stamps Go. And hopefully uh, all the free agents will work out for all your teams here if you're a Stampeder fan or not here. But it's definitely one of the fun things of sports here. So as I'll say, I'll see you in the next video.